the United States, we're still building in many cases using 100, 200 year old technology. The construction sector is really the last industry that has yet to embrace new technology in order to unlock efficiency. Right now, there's something like 400,000 construction jobs in America that are, no one's taking. And so we want to bring technology back into it. So what we're doing is really taking some of the most dangerous and difficult parts of the build, because house framing is one of the most dangerous jobs in America. And so this gives us a chance to use the 3D printing and robotics, because the reality is we just don't have enough people to build. So our goal is really to, to provide a new tool for industry. Yeah, so basically, as you can see, so this is the right now the world's largest 3D printer, 450 square foot. And so now they're currently printing part of the panels for a home unit. So what are you using to print? So we actually invented our own construction material to replace concrete. Yeah, so what you see in these um, barrels, yeah, is our LSM, our light stone material. It basically cures immediately and hardens immediately when you go through the 3D printer. So which part of this, for example, this model here is printed? So part I'll show not? you. So yeah. basically, the curve is 3D printed. So the reason why we were in stealth is because we actually um, had to get certification because technically like, we are the first company ever to like, incorporate 3D printing in a residential unit. So this is a fully 3D printed unit. So this was 3D printed in 24 hours. So we printed the floor, the walls, you know, the ceilings, and like the curve area as well. Printing the entire shell in 24 hours, it really showed what the technology and what the material can do. And one of the really cool things is that unlike 3D printed concrete, we didn't have to stop and let it cure and add rebar, pour concrete into the walls and everything. We really could just print it in 24 hours. So the material we're using is a proprietary thermoset composite that we call lightstone material. So a thermoset composite means it's still using polymers, but unlike a thermoplastic, it, do, it doesn't use heat. So what ours uses is a combination of minerals, recycled glass, and uh, polymer as the binder. And what's cool about it is that instead of using heat and curing over time by cooling, we actually cure it with light. So it gets hit with UV, and that's what that purple light you see there is. UV light hitting it as it comes out, allowing it to support its own weight, opens up the ability to print different shapes, different forms. But the cool thing is we still get full chemical cohesion between the layers. So it's not like concrete where if we take a break, we have to worry about that mechanical adhesion. We actually end up with a fully monolithic structure when the printing is done. Yeah, so literally you can feel like it's 3D printed, right? Like the lines. So th this is like the printer has gone over that. Part. Correct. Okay. So as you see this now, like the printer goes zigzag. So that's what happens when you 3D print. But this is the material, as you can see, like it's it's actually like a wall, like a proper wall. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Yeah. So they print yeah. one wall and then a s how does it work? Yeah, so usually like they'll print panels and they assemble it together. As you can see, like it's all assembled together. And there's a little bit of steel support. Correct. So we still have to like, incorporate like traditional, you know, home construction. You still need to have steel support because that's part of like the law. The regulatory, we can't change that. We have printed a full shell of one of our Mighty Studios. That's not actually what we're currently delivering. And that's really a part of our iterative approach to the regulatory process. Because the reality is, is there's an understandable conservative within building regulators. And so to address that, we've been moving incrementally. So this is actually our prototype where it's fully 3D printed, yeah. And then this is only the curve, it's a hybrid unit. So yeah. as you can see, yeah. the workers are assembling it. Yeah. So we use partial traditional home build and 3D printing. It's still 90% less construction waste than a traditional home build. The whole idea for us is that we want to automate it 
So this is the uh, the control center of our uh, big G printer. As you can see, we got Vinay here, hard at work, uh, running, the, running the controls, and it's also fully camered up and connected to the cloud, so we're actually able to have our R&D team working on it remotely and be able to monitor everything. So there's not yeah. a lot of hands-on. I mean, no. it, that thing goes, right? Yeah, I mean, that's one of the nice things is, because our goal at the end of the day is to actually eliminate about 90 to 95% of the labor hours, but also increase the amount of work overall by increasing that productivity. So how, how much labor does this require to build a house? Yeah, so we've got two different products. We're, we've got our Mighty Mod, which is kind of like a Tesla Roadster. We're taking a 3D printed curved wall, combining it with a traditional steel frame box. So in that regard, it ends up being a hybrid. Then we've got the Mighty Kit system, which is what they're printing here, one of the panel. Actually, no, this is a curve for the, Mighty, for the Mighty Mods. But we also have our Mighty Kit system, which we're moving through certification right now, which is more like our Model S insofar as the entire exterior wall system is 3D printed. It's a modern product, but one that comes at a lower cost than you would get for a similar quality if it's stick built. So, so as I mentioned, with the production units, we're just doing the curved walls 3D printed, but we do have the ability to pr fully print a shell. And so this is actually the first prototype. We have beat the heck out of it. We have driven this from Redwood City to here, all over the bay. We've dropped it a couple times. And so there you'll, you'll notice there's a little wear and tear, little spots here and there, but all in all, it held up remarkably well. The wall here yep. is... Yeah, so you can see it's at a 45 degree angle. So we are testing uh, a new printing head that can actually rotate and print, print at different angles. So you can see down here was at one angle, then we switched it just because we could, just to test the different angles, and then switched to this angle. And then we were able to do a printing across the roof, up through the curve as well. So what did you find out about the different angles? We found this worked really well for allowing us to get that height and get that angle because it allows, uh, but frankly, we're also able to do just flat as well. So it really depends on the needs of the project. But it really was great. I mean, this was less than 24 hours to print this entire shell. And then finishing everything out was in a few other, a few more days with the uh, flooring and, and the doors and everything. But. All in all, pretty quick build. And even with our hybrid units, we're able to build those in about a week. And the mods are cool because when they arrive, they're fully finished. This uh, unit here will actually be going to a customer in Mountain View. And so it's uh, one of our two bedroom, two module units. Essentially with these, we take our studio module, which is what this basically is, put a couple doors in it, and then we add a second module that instead of having the bathroom pod, uh, utilize that space for a closet. Yeah, and on the one bedroom, it actually, the closet starts here, and it's a full walk-in closet with a full bedroom uh, on this side. Yeah, this is the 700 square foot, so usually it's 350 square foot, it comes on its own, and if you want a bigger unit, it's a modular, so it's, it's stuck together. Yeah, so this is like, a, this is a two bedroom um, ADU, so usually it comes, everything comes, um, the kitchen, the sink, the fridge, you know, everything comes um, together with the ADU. And then as you can see, like the bathroom is a full shower. Yeah, oh, wow, it's a yeah. proper like, you know, ADU. <laughs> so this part is all 3D printed, like the curves and yeah. So it comes delivered to your house? Uh-huh, so it's basically what happens is like everything's printed and um, assembled here. Put it on an oversized trailer and crane into your backyard. So this would be an actual second home, in a way, going into a backyard. Exactly. And the reason we started with accessory dwelling units is the state of California has made them really easy to permit over the last three years, starting with laws that went into effect January 2017. And so ADU has made a lot of sense for us because it's a niche market that's growing quickly, but because of the size of ADUs, it's hard for bigger developers and builders to actually make them because it just doesn't pencil out because the overhead costs associated are just very difficult for them. So we saw it as a great opportunity to get to market, show what we could do, build out our certification portfolio, get the experience of going through the entitlements process and really delivering for customers without competing against builders and developers who we've always seen as one of our long-term customer bases along with homeowners. So basically the windows would go on afterwards. So you're uh, no, printing. so it gets yeah. shipped like, oh yeah. So, okay. yeah, so, but again, on this one, just the curve is 3D printed. Right, right. But okay. as once we complete the certification of our new panel system, we'll actually be expanding the amount of 3D printed material on these units as well. It's part of our iterative approach. Because 
we're t bringing such a novel and unique technology into a heavily regulated industry. I mean, the, the reality is that the building codes are written in blood. And we want to make sure that we're actually getting ahead of that because we don't want 3D printing to get in the code only after something goes wrong. It's really important for us that we're demonstrating that safety and providing that opportunity to get it in before then so that we can avoid something going wrong and people getting hurt. So that's why we've moved iteratively to make it as easy as possible for building officials to say yes and allow us to begin delivering units while we continue to demonstrate and build out that certification portfolio and demonstrating that safety. Additionally, we've been working really closely with UL Underwriters Laboratories to evaluate our technology for various use cases that we need it for. And what's come out of that is the world's first standard for 3D printed construction, and that's been used as the basis for Appendix AW in the 2021 Air National Residential Code Up. And so that means that jurisdictions that use that, the IRC can actually take that appendix and plug it into their local codes, and even those that don't formally adopt it will have the opportunity to at least look to it for guidance for 3D printed construction. And so for us, that's part of what we've been doing and why it took us so long to come out of stealth mode, is that we are doing a lot of work to really line up that regulatory side of things. So we also work with the world's largest standards making bodies on developing their new standards for 3D printed construction as well. Because again, we feel it's so important that we're doing everything we can to demonstrate safety of our technology. Yeah, and so the printing though is, is actually just the first part of what we do. So that's kind of the, the very, really cool thing is, even though our material is really strong, and the fiber reinforced material has a strength profile similar to reinforced concrete. It's still soft enough that we can mill the surface with CNC heads that are normally used for metals like aluminum and copper. And so you can actually see here what the team's doing is they're doing an initial uh, 3D scan. So what this does is we've got built-in quality control in the printing process itself. And then comes over here to the finishing cell where we do a 3D scan to make sure it matches the digital file is based off of while also creating a digital file of the physical object to create tool paths for milling of the surface. Because using heads for aluminum and copper allows us to mill the exact tolerances we need for the panel placement, but also opens up opportunities for creating a smooth stone-like finish if the customer wants. One of the exciting things about 3D printing is that to go from one design to another, you just need to change the file. And because we're using a printer, and because of a lot of those features, our goal is to really be able to go from one design to a completely different design with more or less zero marginal cost. So what you're seeing here is an early uh, prototype of the Mighty Kit system. The idea here is that instead of delivering fully finished modules, we actually deliver a flat pack panel system similar to like a Sears kit home uh, from the 20s and 30s, but upgrade, updated for the 21st century. And so what's exciting about this is that we're actually unlocking the ability to use our material as exterior finish air barrier, water barrier, thermal barrier, fire barrier, vapor barrier. So it provides superior energy efficiency for the structures. And right now this is not a clad. I mean, what we're seeing here. Yeah, yeah this is, is just painted. This is our material with paint. So could this be like you'd buy a SIPS panel? Exactly. And unlike a SIPS panel, it wouldn't need all that additional layers of finishing on site. The idea is that it can more or less be like a SIPS panel on steroids is a way to think about it. Because it adds those additional layers of finishing that you just don't have currently with SIPS. With these, the the roofs and the floors will still be traditional and same with the interior walls, but the entire exterior wall system will be 3D printed. And so it's great because it allows a versatility of floor plans when we work with builders and developers. And so the new Mighty Kit system, that's actually will be the primary unit that we're deploying in Rancho Mirage as part of the world's first zero net energy community. So the idea there is to not only provide a beautiful right sized home, but to create a second unit that they can use as a guest house, as a rent passive income for rental, or just a pool house. It really kind of opens up the possibilities of what the space can be. So what we're seeing here is kind of, looks like a one bedroom. Yeah, so that's a one bedroom duo. So one of the things you can see from here is if you see that kind of metal scaffolding in there, mm -hmm. that's actually a bathroom pod. So we don't build the bathrooms ourselves. We've identified a group of suppliers. So we actually have prefabricated bathroom units come fully finished and we can just install them in an hour or two. So it saves us those five to 800 hours that we would normally take to build it. And so that's something we've actually borrowed from the shipbuilding industry. Because if you go in Korea, if you're building a ship, they can build a thousand foot ships in a week. 
and a lot of that is because it's all about plug and play. And so that's something we're doing with our units as well. With the steel that we're using, it's prefabricated, pre-cut. So when it arrives here, it's just a matter of plug and play. And we're following the same idea with the kit system in terms of everything you need is delivered to site and it's just assembled. So there's basically no on-site construction, it's just on-site assembly. This is what is in between the walls to create the installation. Yeah, so we use PU foam technology to basically like control the temperature and stuff like that. So I see in the roof, uh, there is probably more insulation. Is that yeah, correct? So, so this is, is a traditional method where, you know, so in traditional home, it's like this too. Yeah. This, we have to keep it because it's part of like a certification. Yes. Yeah, so we can't, so as much as we want, like we've, we've done like a fully 3D printed home, but unfortunately, you know, regulations. <laughs> you have to go through like different certifications. Like. So we are actually um, introducing a newer generation of this material which is actually like more sustainable and it's like 10 times tensile strength stronger and two times lighter. So the finishes you can do, I mean, you can actually print almost yeah. everything. Yeah, and that's really where we're going, is that while we have our designs that we're delivering currently, our long-term vision has always been to be a production as a service platform for the industry. And so even though that's actually one of the things I really like about our initial version here, that is a hybrid, is that really highlights that our technology can play well uh, with existing uh, technologies, or be deployed, as with our new system, be deployed more independently. And also take advantage of local economics by having a distributed uh, system of factories that we would place in areas where there's demand, near where labor force is. I mean, for example, here in Oakland, we're in an old Pete's Coffee Warehouse. So we're in a situation where we're right next to the port, we're right next to the airport, right next to the highway, heart of the industrial center. So we're not set up hours away from where the demand is and hours away from where the labor is. And that's our vision for as we expand, is finding the right builder developer partners to really help us tap into those local markets, making sure that we're using local economics because God knows it does not make sense to export California construction costs anyway.